give you praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you all of the honor, all of the praise, and all of the glory. Excellent, Lord. We love you. Hallelujah. We love you. Hallelujah. We love you. Hallelujah. We love you. Hallelujah. We seek your face today. We call upon your name. There's none like you nowhere in the mighty name of Jesus. Excellent is our God. Excellent. Excellent is our God. And you're most worthy of praise. We bless you, Jesus. 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 Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, marvelous Savior. 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 Thank you for all of the great things that thou, God, are doing, and they are marvelous in our eyes, and we bless you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. You alone are the Christ. You alone, you alone are the Christ. And we bless you. We glorify you. We magnify you. In the name of Jesus, we celebrate you, Lord. We celebrate your name even right now. We celebrate your name. We celebrate your name. We celebrate your name. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Wonderful counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father. We bless you. We glorify you. Yes, Lord. We glorify you. We glorify you. Yes, Lord. We glorify you, Jesus. God bless him to you, Lakeisha Faison. We thank you for being with us today. Woman of God, Shirley Kennedy, God bless you. God bless you. So delighted to have you with us on today. It is a blessing seeing you with us. Amen. God blessings. God blessings. God's blessings. God blessings. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful Savior. Wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful God. Yes, Pastor Deborah, it's so good seeing you with us today. Amen. Blessings to you, woman of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, that's right. In the mighty name of Jesus, God blessings to you. Happy and delighted that you're with us on today. Amen. Thank you so very much for your prayers. Thank you so very much, woman of God, Jennifer Harris, for your prayers. And thank you for... Amen. All of you, the Lord's people. All of you. Amen. And uh, it's good for us to be here. <clears throat> it is good for us to be here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you now. We thank you now. We thank you now, Father. We thank you, excellent God. We thank you. For those that are with us on Lifeline, we thank God for you. Thank God for your Lifeline. Thank God for your Lifeline. Thank God for you being with us on today. Amen. I see all of you. Amen. As you're chiming in, God bless to you. Mother Williams, God bless to you. We thank God for you and your life. Amen. And what the Lord is doing for you. Excellent God. Thank you. Thank you, excellent Father. Amen. Thank God for your parents. Thank God for your mothers and fathers, you who have mothers and fathers living. I thank God for your mothers and fathers and how they're being a support system to you, or either you're being a support system to them. Thank God for you. Amen. We're getting ready to go into our lesson today. Amen. And uh, we want to see what great things God has in store for us here. Amen. Concerning his lesson. Today, we're looking at the second part of our lesson from yesterday. Yesterday, we were hanging out in Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. And today, we're going to pick up 
with Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 21. Amen. We're going to pick up with the last verse, uh, verse 12, and we'll go to verse 21 today. On uh, uh, last week, we had a different, um, yesterday rather, we had a different topic. And today, we want to look at the topic of uh, glory to God. To obtain the things of God requires repentance and a constant push, a constant forward push. I know, push forward, but I just decide to make it uh, a constant forward push. Push forward, push forward, press forward, get in the press, forward, push forward, press forward. Move ahead. Don't stop. Don't give in. Don't throw in the towel. But keep moving expeditiously forward. Amen. Because this is what's going to matter. Is that when you begin to move into the things of God today. Move forward into the things of God. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward with speed. Move forward into the things of God. To obtain the things of God requires repentance and a constant forward press. Repentance, because every man was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. In sin did your mother conceive you. In us, yes. I'm not pointing the finger and says you and you only. But yes. Amen. Give me one moment. Give me one moment. I'm hearing an alarm go off. Just, just, just give me one moment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We'll be right back. to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Amen. We're back. I had to take care of some, th some things. <laughs> and we got, uh, God, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Amen. So, thank God for all of you that on the lifeline all of you that's on Facebook Live, YouTube, thank God for you. Amelia, God blessings to you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you, sister in Christ. Hand pink waving. All right. There's a hand pink waving. <laughs> All right. Amen. God blessings to you. Listen, we thank God for the thing that the Lord is doing. Amen. Uh, again, our lesson to obtain the things of God requires repentance and a constant forward press. Uh, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Keep pressing forward. Keep moving ahead. Don't become lackadaisical. Don't throw in the... Uh, 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 don't get lame. Don't uh, uh, just stop and we will surrender flag. No, keep moving forward. Keep pressing forward. Keep going ahead. Because your, your strength, your healing, your deliverance, your, your everything that you need is just right there at your fingertips. 
one of the things that the Lord will always uh, reprimand and uh, constantly, when he was constantly on the disciples, it wasn't that you had to go and buy this. You didn't have to go and get this. You didn't have to go and get anything. He would reprimand them often, though. He said, oh, ye of little faith, wherein did you doubt? It's right there. Oh, ye of little faith, wherein did you doubt? Stop doubting. Stop uh, uh, walking in unbelief. Start believing. What does it take you to believe? Just start believing. You don't even have to move a chair. You don't have to stand up. You don't have to lay down. Just start believing. Start trusting. Start believing. Start believing what you're hearing. Not everything that you hear, but what you're hearing today. What you're hearing from this platform today. Start believing this word. Start hearing this word. Start trusting God. I didn't come to play with your heart. I didn't come to play with your mind. But I've come to connect you with the Father. I've come to point you into the things of Christ. And the Holy Ghost shall help me to give to you the unadulterated gospel. And I will give it even to my own personal hurt. Whereas, what do you mean your own personal hurt? If something is going on in my life when I do not line up, I'm still going to give you the word. Because the word not only is going to find you, but it's going to find me. It's going to find me first. Because the word is what we live by. I live by it. You live by it. And all of us who are going to please God must live by the word. The word become that 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 that, um, that barometer, become that uh, temperature, it become that guideline, that GPS, it, whatever you need to do to get to the next level. The word of God is that entity, is that spirit, is that driving force to get you there, to get us there. So we need it. So if we are not where we need to be, the word's going to help us get there. We are not going to shy away from the word of God. Amen. We just have to do it. And that's it. So to obtain the things of God requires repentance. Repent. Father, forgive me of all the sin that I've committed, all the wrong that I've done. And you, you must mean it from your heart. You've got to tell the truth about it. No matter how much you love it, the past, no matter how much you've embedded into that sin, no matter when the last time it was. And I'm, and I'm saying these things, but I'm not pinpointing what your sins are. Only you know what they are. But sin, whether it be person, place, or thing that have violated you or you have violated it, uh -huh, those are the things that you've got to say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Blot out my transgressions. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. All right. So we got some jumping on going on. Got some jumping going on. Unstable screen. Unstable screen. I don't know how to fix that. I don't know. I don't know what you may have to do to unfix that st uh, unstable screen. But all I do know is, Father, help us. Help us today. That we will not be distracted. We will not be inundated with foolishness. We will not be inundated with the things of the world. Father, help us. Give us stability. Give us stability. Not distracting. The enemy come to distract us. He come to steal, kill, and destroy us. He come to the, try to hinder the word, block the word, so that the recipients will not receive the word today. But Father, give us help. Fight our case for us. That this word will not be hindered that it would go forth, God, in the name of Jesus. Let your glory, oh God, let your glory prevail. Let the word of God go forth in the name of Jesus. Let your angelic host deliver this word to the source wherein uh, uh, those persons, those individuals are ready to receive. To every uh, willing heart, let this word come unhindered, untainted, untouched, unviolated, uh, unwatered, and not even watered down. But Father, I pray that you have blessed the recipient of this word even now. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We trust you, Lord. 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 We trust you. 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 We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you. You're faithful. You're faithful. You're faithful to be trusted. Oh, God, you're holy to be trusted. You're worthy to be trusted. 
in the name of Jesus. And we trust you. We choose to trust you. We choose to believe you. We choose to honor you. We choose to stand on your word and walk in your word and rest in your word and abide in your word. We choose to make that decision. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, marvelous Savior. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your divine help. Thank you for your divine help, Father. Thank you for your divine help. Thank you for your divine help. In Jesus' mighty name. The Lord will often reprimand his disciples. You didn't have to go anywhere. If you didn't have the money, you didn't have the shoes, you didn't have clothes, you didn't have change of raiment. Oh, ye of little faith, wherein did you doubt? Your biggest uh, 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 divine helper, your greatest destiny helper is your faith. He will never leave you. And, and, and yes, yes, the Holy Ghost. Yes, of course, the Holy Ghost. I don't want anybody to think that I'm ruling out the Holy Ghost, but don't ever think that the Holy Ghost does not work uh, uh, and that he works alone. He works with faith. Faith works with the Holy Ghost. They work together. They are a part of each other. And when you hear about the gift of the Spirit, you have the gift of the Spirit. And, and part of one of the gifts of the Spirit is faith. And also when you talk about the fruit of the Spirit, you have faith. So it's always companies, the Holy Ghost. You don't have the Holy Ghost apart from faith. Oftentimes what you need is someone to teach you to utilize your faith. And you need some obstacles in your life to teach you about faith. One of the greatest teaching mechanisms, one of the greatest teaching tools that teaches us how to utilize our faith is circumstances, situations, temptations, troubles, a little bit of a little bit of trouble, a little bit of pain here, a little bit of situations there. We don't like that, but it helps us the more. Because these are the things that makes you call on Jesus. These are the things that the devil would put in a alternative plan first. Let me say that again. These are the things, temptation, sickness, disease, hurting. Um, if you're hurting, if you're going through some things, not knowing how you're going to get through it, one of the very first thing that the enemy would put in your mind was he, he would put a pacifier, something that's temporary, a temporary fix, a quick temporary fix, um, a, a Tylenol, an Excedrin, a uh, bare aspirin, uh, yeah, yeah a, a, a pacifier of milk and magnesium, a pacifier of something that uh, is going to take the pain away, take the hurt away, take those things away from us that we know is, is want to slow walk us down. But uh, when you begin to step past that and say, Father, I trust you. No, your flesh don't, don't want to hear that, but your spirit man does. Father, I trust you. I trust you to take away the pain. I trust you to take away the hurt. I trust you to take away the shame, the guilt. I trust you to take it away, Father. I've not done things that line up with your word. I've done things my way. And Father, please forgive me. I'm willing, I'm ready, and I'm able, I'm capable of doing it your way. Help me to do it your way. I surrender, Lord. I surrender. I give up everything that I'm so accustomed to, that I'm so comfortable with, things that I've become so trained to walk in. I give it up all that I might learn you, know you, have you in my life, permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. And today... I choose to utilize my faith in the name of Jesus. I choose not to use a pacifier. I choose not to use some temporary uh, 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 get healed or uh, eliminate the pain quick scheme. No, I choose to eliminate it permanently. I choose to walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, use me for your divine purpose and command my faith as I command my faith to come alive. Father, manifest yourself in me. Manifest your healing strength. Manifest your miracles. Manifest your glory. Manifest yourself in me in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, faith must come alive. Jesus told the woman, if you drink from this well right here, right here, you're gonna come, you're gonna keep coming. You're gonna always thirst again. But if you drink of the water that I will give you, 
There'll be a well of water springing up in you. You'll never thirst again. That's the water I want. I'm sure that you want the same water. And you got to believe the book. That's it. You've heard the word. Now believe the book. So, and then you may have to ask questions. You mean some natural water? No, he's not talking about a natural water. But you will not know that until you ask the question. No, it's not a natural water. No, it's not going down to a natural pool of Siloam. No, but it's plunging uh -huh, in the word of God. It's the plunging in him through faith in him. Through having faith in his word. Having faith in the things that he say. Standing on his word. And whatever his word say, you do it. Whatever he say, you do it. And as you begin to do what he says, he will lead you into greener pasture. You'll never hunger. You'll never thirst. Why? Because he's giving you that water that never runs dry. It's called that everlasting water. It's called that spiritual water. And spiritual water and physical water, they do not look the same. Physical water, we are so acquainted with that. I don't have any here beside me. Everybody know what the physical water is, but what about that spiritual water? The spiritual water could come in so many different shapes and size and ways and a wave of it, a, a, a flow of it, a, 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 a just a mist of it, a, a, a glory of it, a, a shadow of it, a, 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 a beauty of it. A, 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 sp a spontaneity of it. it. It just comes in so many different ways. And it comes to overshadow. It's not limited in one form. Why? Because it's spiritual. If you can explain it like you want to explain it, then it, it might just be carnal. But it's not carnal. It's spiritual. Because it's living. And it's moving. And it's alive. And it's not limited to one form, one shape, one dimension. It's not limited to that, but it does what the natural water cannot do and so much more. So much more. So much more. <laughs> so much more. And that's why when you look at water, for example, look at the Pacific Ocean, look at the Atlantic Ocean, they differ. Look at the Red Sea, look at the, uh, uh, the Asian Sea, look at uh, all the different seas and the oceans. They differ, but there's still water. Look at the, uh, the lakes and the streams. Look at the running water, the drinking water. Look at all these different waters. They come in different shapes and size and colorings and so different many other different manifestations of them. And just like it is on the earth realm, so it is in the spirit. It's not limited to one shape, one form, one size, one... Well, no, no, no. It's not like that. It's a living water. It's a spiritual water. It's a glorious water. You do not put it in a bottle, but you put it in vessels. And the vessels you are, you are that vessel that's ready to hold the water. And the Lord will pour forth the water of life in you, just like you would take a container and pour forth the water in a drinking cup or a glass or a tissue. And as you would pour it in that container, so does the Lord pour forth his refreshing spring inside of you. And these are the things that would make you to be that well of water springing up into everlasting life. This is that thing, whereas it's so refreshing that when you have lost all your strength, all of a sudden you're ready to get up out of wherever you've been sitting and you're ready to move on. People are wondering, where did you get that strength from? For a few moments ago, you were tired because you were fatigued and you haven't had anything to drink. You haven't had it. And, and then you, you got so much strength, so much mobility, so much everything. You're just ready to go. We can do this. Your face said we can do this. Your faith shot you a penicillin, <laughs> a, a spiritual penicillin. Say, look, get up. We got this. We got this. We're going to go another further. Oh, the strength of trusting God. Oh, the, the, just the loveliness of trusting God. To obtain the things of God requires repentance and a constant uh, forward press. 
We expect your life to change for better forever. You must expect the same. Yes, we expect your life to change for better forever. You must expect the same. Don't give up on me. Keep believing. Keep trusting your life. Your life. Your life. Your life. You must expect your life to change for better forever. For better forever. You must expect the same. That's what we expect of you. And then we have a subtopic to our lesson. The subtopic to our lesson goes a little something like this. The best way to move forward in Christ, start by forgetting the things of the past. That's how you start. It starts by you forgetting the things of your past. The best way to move forward in Christ, the best way, the best way, the best way to move forward in Christ starts by forgetting the things of the past. As long as you remember those things of the past, it hurts you. It keeps you stagnant. It keeps you bitter. It keeps you hurting. It keeps you blaming people. It keeps you blaming and, and grumbling. As long as the man sat beside the pool, uh -huh, there's an angel that came to the pool every, I want to say year. The Bible didn't say year. It says season. And I don't know when that season was. The Bible says season. But I'm saying year, hopefully, that you will understand it even a little more clear. He would come down at a certain time to trouble the water. And then he that was stepping first uh, would get into the water, would be healed of whatever he was going through. And this man was faithful. He was always there. But somebody always stepped down in front of him. And when Jesus asked him, would he be made whole? You know what he said? He didn't say, yes, Lord. He didn't say, I want it, God. He didn't say, have mercy on me, Jesus. I've heard about you, Jesus. You can do this, Jesus. He didn't say that. He started complaining. He was looking in his past. Every time I come down, somebody always jumped in front of me. And he stayed there for 38 long years. Every time I come down, somebody always stepped down in front of me. Somebody this, somebody that, somebody always getting ahead of me. Somebody's getting it before I do. And, and I've been faithful. I've been doing this. He want to live in the past. He want to live in his hurt. He want to wallow in his pain. Stop wallowing in your pain. Stop staying in your yesterday. Get up and move forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Let go of your past. Your past have hurt. Let go of your past. Your past have regret. Let go of your past. Your past have failure. Let go of your past. Stop remembering. Stop remembering of where you've been. Stop carrying the bones of Joseph. Stop carrying those dead bones. Bury those things that once exist. Take some time. Stop what you're doing and bury those old memories. Bury those old pains. Bury those old things. Let it go. You can't be saved holding on to what Mookie did to you five years ago. Let Mookie go. Mookie gone. Mookie married. Mookie got children. Mookie gone on by her life. You still stuck in Lodi Bar because Mookie and you had some cross words and you never got it right. Mookie went on. Said, I'm sorry. You didn't believe her. You didn't believe her. You said, no, that's not it. You, you did more to that. She said, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I'm not going to forgive you. You choose to stay there and hold on to it. You're missing blessings. You've had marriage opportunities to come your way and throw itself in your hands. But because you could not forgive, you are stuck like Chuck in a rut. And you cannot move forward. You've had marriage opportunities. You've had financial opportunities. You've had a uh, 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 people opportunity. You even had opportunity where God could have endowed you with more children and, and, and favor and grace and, and business opportunities and all kinds of opportunities. But you fail. You, uh, 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 just, you decide to just stay in Lodibar and hold grudges until you repent and said, Father, forgive me, I've done wrong. Father, have mercy upon me. He is a long-suffering God. He will, he, he will wait on you if you just mean business. But he, and see, it's so good that he knows if you mean business or not. Because if he, if he knows, he's, he's a God that searches your heart. 
he know that you don't mean business, he's going to move on and leave you. But because he know that you mean business, he's waiting on you to get it right. So get it right. And just simply say, Father, forgive me. I've sinned against you. I've done wrong. I've held people. And I've called people. And I've just held them there. I've held them in my hurt. I was hurt. I stayed in hurt. I held them in that hurt. I would not let them go. And I would not come out. Every one of us going to stay right here until I'm healed. But healing could not come because I kept remembering the pain. You're not moving forward. You're keeping everybody bound. And life keep moving. Life is going on without you. You can be old and gray. Still in Lodibar. Talking about the times when the angels came down and troubled the water. And you were the first one there. And somebody always jumped in front of you. And you never did get your healings. Come on, people. Time to get up, time to stand up, time to get rid of the past. The best way to move forward in Christ, start by forgetting the things of the past. Repent and start getting, forgetting the things of the past. That's how you move forward. Somebody ought to say that's how you move forward. That's how you move forward. Repent and forget about the past. That's it right there. Repent and forget about the past. You want to move forward? Repent, forget about the past. I'm not taking this with me. No, I'm not taking this with me, Lord. I got to get past this right here. I got to get past this right here. I got to get past this right here. Repent and keep moving forward. That's what's going to get you there. That's what's going to help you. You've been where you are too long now. You have not made any progress. You know the progress report. You don't want to look at it. You want to blame everybody else. You want to blame everybody else for your uh, 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 failures in life. But you don't have to have a failure if you would just get up. Father, help me to forget the past. And today, I put forth every mental effort, every spiritual effort, every physical effort, effort to erase the negative, the negative past that I walked in that I've indulged in. Even those things that I thought was good, I'm even erasing that. All I want to obtain is you. Help me to obtain you, Father. That's what I want. All I want is you. Forget those things of the past. Press forward to the things of God and watch your healing just unfold before you like an accordion. Watch it unfolds. Watch it opens up. Watch the ray of his glory surrounds you. The lesson, the lesson at verse 12 starts like this. Not as though I had already obtained, either were already perfect. I'm, I'm not obtained, and I'm definitely not perfect. But I follow, but I follow after. Check this out. Not as though I had already attained. I have not. Either were made uh, already were perfect. I am not. But I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. This is what he's saying. Brethren, I count not myself to have arrived. I count my, not myself to have apprehended. I count not myself to have made it to that resting place, to that stopping place, to, to be pleasing in the Lord's sight. I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, this one thing I do, this is how I'm getting there. And this is how you're going to get there. If you're going to be in his presence, if you're going to rest in his glory, if you're going to be able to handle the things of God, if you're going to be able to ascertain, hallelujah, the beauty of God, the glory of God, the anointings of God, it starts right here. This is how it happens. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. 
I, 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 I'm aware, I'm aware that I did not write it that way, but I've got to forget those things which are behind. The best way, the best way, the best way to move forward in Christ starts by forgetting the things of the past. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and preaching, reaching, reaching forth, reaching forth into those things which are before me. Not the people. I'm not reaching for the people, but I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before me. There are some things ahead of me. There are some there are some valuable things ahead of me. There are some valuable lessons ahead of me. There are some protocols to follow. There are some protocols that wise men walked in and have obtained their prize. And I too must ascertain that prize. I too must press into what matters most and stop running around, zipping around into those things that does not matter. Glory to God, help me, Jesus. Stop chasing those things that are mundane. Stop chasing those things that, that are a little scallywag. Stop chasing those things that are just, uh, are just, are just nerve-wracking. Stop chasing those things that's going to put you uh, out of the will of God. Chase those things uh, which are before you, not behind you. Notice what we said at the beginning of our lesson. To obtain the things of God requires repentance and a constant forward press. You've got to get into a forward press. Press forward, not backwards. Forward we're moving, not backwards. Get into a forward press. Brother, when I count not myself to have arrived, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, forgetting those things which are behind, Forgetting those things which are bad. Doesn't matter how close it were to you. Doesn't matter how painful. Doesn't matter how beautiful. Doesn't matter how whatever it was. It could have been a private moment, a special moment to you. I, I know, because you've lived that life. But now it's time to move forward. Forgetting those things which are behind. <laughs> Forgetting those things. Stop being a hoarder of your past. Let me say that again. Stop being a hoarder of your past. I don't even have that one written. I wish I had that one saved up. Stop being a hoarder of your past. Hoarding your past. Everywhere you go, it's all inundated in your house, your past. The things you did in your past, the things that you said in your past, your past achievement, your past accolades, your past certifications, your past this, your past that, and all those things you've done in your past, they're all decorating the walls, the ceilings, the floors, they're in the room, they're in the bedroom, they're in the living room, they're in the bathroom, they're in the doghouse, they're in the chicken house, they're in the driveway, they're everywhere. You can't hardly get in your house for hoarding the things of your past. Everywhere you go, you got things of the past reminding you, reminding you, and it's so hurtful, it's so painful, it's so denigrating, and it keeps you that way. It was designed to keep you bound. It was designed to keep you out of the will of God. That's what makes it so painful. That's what makes it bondage. You're in it and not know how to get out of it. Brother I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. In other words, guess what? It's right in your reach. I dare you to reach. I dare you to reach for it. I dare you to reach for the knob that's on the spiritual door. I dare you to reach for an advancement. I dare, you to, I dare you to reach for the advantage. Reach for the upper hand. I'll say it again. Reach for the upper hand. Reach for the advantage. Reach for a come up. Reach for the right thing. It's right there before you. Reaching forth to those things which are before me. You don't have to cross the seven seas. You don't have to run around 
corners and circles and no, it's in your reach. He wouldn't be telling you to do something if you couldn't do it. Reaching forth unto those things which are before. Set your focus on where you're going. Set your focus on where you're going, not where you come back from. You don't need the rearview mirrors. You don't need the rearview mirrors looking back behind you to remind you where you come from. Keep moving forward. Put the blinders on. Keep moving forward. Let nothing distract you. Keep moving forward. I press. There's got to be a press. We don't like the press, but I press. It's not going you, you, you may think this is going to be easy. And I'm glad Paul said I press. It's not a, I know people said this is an easy walk. People have lied that when you're in Christ, this walk is an easy walk. What walk are they walking? <laughs> Jesus. I'm trying to find out what walk are they walking, Nicole. I don't know. This is, the Bible never told you. The Bible's not going to lie to you and say this is an easy walk. The Bible never tell you that. Jesus didn't tell you that. The Holy Ghost didn't tell you that. None of these things have ever told you that this walk is an easy walk. It says that the ways of a transgressor is hard. It says that any man being in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And with newness, did you think to maintain newness, you don't have to work? Do you think to maintain newness, you don't have to press? You don't have to sweat? You know what? I remember having a brand new car. I'm not talking about my little uh, 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 79 Monte Carlo this time. I'm not talking about that one. I talked about that one the other day. I'm not talking about that. But I had a brand new car. And in that brand new car, guess what? I was driving that car. And uh, I, I love that little car too. But I, I, I didn't like it like I love that Monte Carlo. I learned some lessons from that Monte Carlo. That thing, man, I, it had to go. That thing was demon possessed. <laughs> it looked good. It looked fire. It was a nice looking car, but that car was demon possessed. That thing had me washing him every day. That thing had me cleaning him and vacuuming him, him out and 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 and, um, and armor rolled in her tires and, uh, and and didn't want nobody in in, in her seats and on her leather. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, and I was like worshiping it. Not intending to worship it, but that's what I was doing. When you don't want to use it to pick up people, no, 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 no. Wipe your feet, wipe your feet. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was putting that thing before God, and so there was another car. I had a chance to get another, a newer model, and in getting that car, some things happened. Some things happened there, and let me show you what you what happened there. It was a newer car. But the car got dirty. The car went through some mud, went through some dust, went through some some all kind of road debris, road kill, all kind of stuff. But you know what? That's the way it is with your life. No matter how you take care of it, it's gonna go through some road kill. It's gonna go through some debris in life. And you're going to have to flush it. You're going to have to wash it. You're going to have to keep it clean. You're going to have to shine it. You're going to have to get in the shower. You're going to have to bathe. You're going to have to wash. You're going to have to wash your clothes. You got to do all these things. And you do it in the natural. Don't ever think that your spiritual life, uh, that you can just not do that for your spiritual life. You need to do the same thing for your spiritual life just like you do it for your physical life. Just like you get in the shower for your physical life, you need to get in the spiritual shower for your spiritual life. And ask God to clean me up. In prayer, Father, clean me. Father, wash me. Thoroughly cleanse me, Father. Thoroughly lavender, lavish, lavish, lavish me. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You and you just lavish yourself, lavish yourself with the with the soap. Yeah, just just lavish myself, God, in the Word of God, with the praise of God, with the righteousness of God, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in my heart to God. This is how you lather yourself up in the spiritual cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. And any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. How often do you do this? Regularly. Not daily, regularly. Often. Often, so many times, often throughout the day. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. 
I worship you, Lord. I worship and adore you. And then you're praying. And then you're singing hymns and spiritual hymns. You're making a melody to him. You're praying to God. You, you, you're just speaking to him. You're asking him to lead you and guide you, show you the way, show you what to do next. You're constantly talking to him. This is not a little way that is automatic. When you give your life to Christ, your life becomes automatic and everything fall in place. This is not a life where everything just simply fall in place and you just ascertain those things that are righteous. No, 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 no. I don't know who lied to you, but there are some things you're going to have to press into. It doesn't, it, you, you can't get it except you press into it. If you don't press into it, you're not going to get it. I, I work on cars also. And every now and then we have to change out the wheel bearings. And the wheel bearings, you don't just put it up there and just expect for it to easily come out or easily go in because it's not going to do so. The thing is tapered and it's, and, and it's um, bored out to a, a certain specification. And then if you're not careful, you're going to think, oh, oh, the hole is too small or either the, uh, the bearing is too large. No, it is designed to go in the somewhat tight because this tension got the whole... The, the, the bearing together so it will not slip, will not turn, will not rotate. It's got to be in there and you've got to press it in. When you press that thing in, it holds, it congeals, and it does everything it needs to do. You don't have to worry about the rattling, the shaking, the rolling. No, you've got to press that thing in place. There are some things in life you're not going to get it, you're not going to ascertain it until you press into it. you got to press it. It must be pressed. You don't just put it in and it just, oh, flip, flop, pop, 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 fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. No, it doesn't happen that way. There's some things it's not going, you're not going to get it until you press it. There's some anointing you're not going to get until you press it. There's some things you're not going to be able to do until it's pressed. There's some things you're not going to be able to come out of until it's pressed. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Oh, they didn't tell you there's a prize here? They didn't tell you there's a gift waiting you? They didn't tell you that? Oh, there's a great reward waiting for those that would just honor him in this life. If you honor him in this life, he's going to honor you in your next. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, as many of us who are willing to be perfect, striving to be perfect, are being perfected daily. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be just minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Come to that place that you have the same mind, the same intent, the same goal, the same uh, uh, drive, the same fortitude. Come to that place where you want the same thing. God, all I want is you. All I want is you. Can you say that? Can you really say that? Can you text it? Can you comment on it? Can you just say, God, all I want is you. All I want is you. I, I want you. All those other things of the past doesn't even matter no more. All I want is you. I want you in my life. I need you in my life. Let us therefore as many as be perfect. Perfected. Now I know it didn't say perfected. It said perfect. Let us therefore as many as be perfect. Those who are being perfected daily. Be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Father, put this in their lineup. Put this on their menu. Put this on their menu. There you go, Lakeisha. All I want is you, Lord. Uh-huh. I need you every second of my life. That's right. That's right. That's right. And as you keep talking to him just like that, 
he's going to fulfill it. He's going to fulfill your desires. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Give him what you need. Tell him what you want and watch the Lord come through for you. But if you don't ask him nothing, how can he give you the desires of your heart if you're not telling him what you desire? Put your desires before him and watch the Lord fulfill your desires. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained? Nevertheless, where to we have already attained? There are some things we've already reached. There are some things we've already uh, 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 attained to. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained? Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Those areas that we have reached, that level of maturity that we have reached, let us walk in this thing together. Let us teach the same thing, speak the same thing, uh, worship the same, glorify God the same, and these things. Brethren, be followers. Uh, uh, well, let me go ahead and nevertheless. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, and that area that you've already attained, and that area that you've already arrived there, and just like in your in your integrity, in your faith, in your in your willingness, in your uh, uh, ability to uh, 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 um, articulate His Word, you've attained there. And the only thing that's like it is that you want more maturity in it, more grace in it. Okay, that's fine. Walk. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me. It's okay. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to rob you. I'm not here to take your money. I'm not here to do that. I already know that you take the person money, Watch them act funny. I'm <laughs> not ready to see you act funny. I know I'm good whether you bless me or no. And I'm not here parading in your face. Come on now. Send this, send this, send this. Come on and help a brother out. Mm -mm. I'm not going to do that. God know how to touch your heart. And if God don't touch your heart, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. The last time I heard, the last time I heard, this was the Lord's doing, and it was marvelous in our eyes. This is the Lord's work. And don't you know, if I'm in the Lord's vineyard, the Lord would raise up a people that would sow into this ministry. And if God raised them up, and they sow into this ministry, they've located this ministry, and they're sowing into this ministry, they're blessing this ministry, trust me, if they're doing that, their rewards are coming from God. There's nothing that I can do to repay them. But their reward is coming from the Lord. Trust me on that one. God will reward them because I know the prayer that I pray. God, I, I don't want nobody to feel and to think that I'm trying to rob them. And I've seen how people do ministry. I don't want that on my resume. I don't want to go out as a beggar. I know what that's what they do. They beg. They do these things. But that's not what you told me. Your word told me that looky on the fields, the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. Pray you to the Lord of the harvest that he might send forth laborers into his vineyard. And here I am. I'm in his vineyard and I'm working. Somebody else is in his vineyard and the Lord knows this and the Lord sends them to sow into this ministry. It's the Lord is doing, not mine. And if the Lord touch them to sow into this ministry, trust me, their reward is coming from God. God got them. God see them. God see their faithfulness. And those persons who've been doing so, God know where you are. The Lord will not allow you to do this and you miss your reward. God will not allow you to do that and you miss an apostolic reward. Oh no, you're not going to miss out. You just be faithful and do what the Lord says do. Why? Because as I do the Lord's work, you're also doing the Lord's work because you have uh, a starting out robbery to support his system. And when you support his system, that's all that matters. Need I beg you to support his ministry? No. Need I ask you? No. Need I coerce you? Mm -mm. Because if you are of God, God's going to touch you to do it. <laughs> I, I just believe that. 
That's where my faith is. That's where my faith is, and that's where my faith is going to stay. And so no one will be able, ever be able to say, listen, that um, uh, uh, and they hijacked the page, and they, and, and they said that they're me, and that uh, we're asking you to sow into this ministry, to do this, to do that, to do this, and do that, and all the other things. Every one of you who know me know that that's not how I do things. You, you know that. And so I'm not worried about them trying to hijack this page. They may try to hijack the page and, and you stop getting the content, but to hijack the page and start uh, 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 saying that, you know, you know they're authorized by me to receive. No, mm -mm. Not, no, they're not authorized by me. If you don't hear me say it out of my mouth, my own mouth, no, mm -mm. it's not being said. I'm saying that because of the fact too many people have made a mockery of this thing. Too many people would come to the social media platform and beg for money and beg for things, but they're not giving you a nickel worth of dog's meat. They're not giving you anything, but they will beg for money. And all that we were tired of that. Ah, but I heard, I, I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard. Because you heard, that's good. I'm still trying to hear, but I can't hear because you're still hearing something and you won't release what you heard you got to release what you heard if you've heard something then be really willing to release it freely the lord gave it to you freely give it you trying to sell it to me why, why are you trying to sell it to me why are you trying to sell something that was given to you freely <laughs> we're not gonna stay there don't worry i'm not gonna stay there i'm not gonna rain on your parade I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to rate. I'm not, no. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. If you have seen me do and you've seen others do as I do, mark them, pray for them, stand with them, learn how to be a follower of them so that at some point, you too are going to do ministry. You too are going to go out and touch lives. Don't be a robber of God's people. Don't take their money from them and you've given them nothing. You've given them nothing to sustain them. You've given them nothing to help them. You've given them nothing to, to, to turn them over to Christ. Mm -mm. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's going to be bad enough when you have to stand before God and you can't produce nothing. And then now you're standing for God. You can't produce nothing. And then you have this resume on you. Oh, but you took offerings. <laughs> and you still didn't produce nothing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk. So as ye have us for as an example. Go and walk this walk. Gonna do what the Lord has allowed us to do and glorify God in it. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping. I'm telling you this, Paul is saying, I'm telling you this while weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. They may look like us. They may act like us. They may look sanctimonious and deep. They may act like, and, and just because they say, hallelujah, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And they, they look deep in power. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And the hand look feeble. Oh, hallelujah. And then you're thinking, oh my goodness, he's a heavy anointed. He got that heavy handshake. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> he got that heavy handshake. Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless your daughter. Bless you, my son. Ah, Jesus. And you run after that. Get a grip, people. Get a grip. Get a grip. Brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. There are some people who really want to do it right. And there are some that's going to gouge you. They're going to take from you and give you nothing in return. 
Pray for the people that God have given you. Cover them in your prayers. There's some people on this line right now. I don't, I don't even have to worry. They, they always send me texts. I'm praying for you, man of God. I'm praying for you. How's your mother? How's your mother? How, 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 how's your mother? Is your mother fine? Are you okay? Get you some rest. Get you some rest. Now, I'll be on the prayer line praying at night. And sometimes that one I be half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nicole, Nicole Bowling. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole haven't said nothing. She's just so kind. She'll be there. Come on, Lord, help him, Lord. I know you've been saying that, Nicole. Just help him, Lord. I know you've been saying that, woman of God, Jennifer Harris, Pastor Cooper. Just help him, Lord. Oh, God, help me, Lord. Jesus, help me, Lord. But I'm in there hanging in there, and they're praying for me. Somebody had enough kindness to say, Get some rest, please. Get some rest. Get some rest. And I am. Gonna try to get some rest. <laughs> oh God. But I'm trying to tell you all I want is all I want is the Lord. He become my thirst, my hunger and my thirst. I want him. I I, I need him. Ah Jesus. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. They're not, they don't mean you no good. Whose end is destruction. They have done things and, and they didn't all set out to do things evil. They didn't all set out to do wickedly. But there are some who did this at an early age and then they stepped on... Uh, a, a, a habit. They stepped in the habit of begging at a young age. They stepped in the habit of uh, just giving you something watered down at a young age. They stepped in the habit of um, of just doing other things, talking about themselves as a at a young age, and they were not corrected. And because they were not corrected, now they've been preaching forty some years, and they're still doing the same thing, talking about themselves. Nothing has changed. No man have corrected them. They're just talking about themselves. I remember when I was this. I remember when I was that. I used to do it this way. I used to do it that way. And I would have a pack house and people would be standing up and I would wave my hand and people would fall out and I would do it like this. Nah, shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I'm sorry for being so rude, but shut up. Why? Why are you saying shut up? Because you're living in your past. Let go of your past. If those were the glory days, how come you're not living on those glory days today? If you want to do what is right and those days were the glory days, then you bring back those glory days. Stop talking about the glory days. Bring back the glory days. Get in your corner. Get in your, uh, uh, your, 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 your closet. Get in that altar and pray. Oh, Father, whereas I have seen a move of your glory, I've seen the opening of blinded eyes and unstopping of deaf ears, and you've used me, God, to heal the sick and to raise the dead. Father, do it again. Do it again for your glory. Do it again that these people may know that you're God. Do it again, oh God. Allow me to walk in your glory again. Allow me, God, to do what you've called me to do again. Oh God, do it again, Father. If you're not asking him to do it again, shut up. Why shut up? Because you're just talking about yourself. You're talking about what you used to do. I don't want to hear about what you used to do. I want to hear about what you're doing. Stop wasting the people's time. Give them something to hope for. Give them something to stand on. Give them something to glorify God with. Give them something that they will know that I want that gospel. That man of God right there walks in anointing of deliverance. I want that right there, right there. People nowadays, they don't see that. And they walk away from church with their head hung down. Man, I thought he was going to do something. I thought he was going to come out and shake his hand over the place and the God this and God that and it manifests. Man, I sat up and down for four hours. We didn't do nothing. All they did was ask for an offering and they talked about something and I fell asleep. And you boast about it. <laughs> you boast about the time you went to sleep on church. You boast about the time, how it was hot. 
packed house was hot, but nothing went down. I'm not going back down no more. I can sit in my own house and read the book. You've come to that conclusion. I know there's a lot of things we have not done right. But that's why we need you, men and women of God, to pray for us. Pray for every pastor. Pray for every leader. Father, that every man of God, woman of God, when they get up, give them to give us something. That they should be in your presence. And that when they come out of your presence, they're like Moses. That their presence is so bright we can't even look at them. They've been in your presence, God. We have to veil them. They have to give us your word from behind the veil. They have to give it to us in such a way, Father, that we can't even stand to look at them. We know that they've been in your presence. Father, help us bring us back to those days. Not the day we are talking about ourselves. That's self-glory. We want to glory in ourselves and we have done nothing. All we've done was lift an offering. People have given, we've given them nothing in return. They brought their cancers and their tumors, the high bloods and the sugar diabetes. They brought the cripple. They brought the lame. They brought the dumb. They brought the demon possessed. And they're still not saved. Father, help us. Help us. That they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Let me say that again. Whose destruction, let me go back to 18 verse, 18, 18, here come 18. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction whose God is their belly whose glory is in their shame whose mind earthly things they're so full with earthly things they want to do godly things but they can't do godly things because they're so full of earthly things and whose glory is the shame for our conversation is in heaven this is where our conversation is our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the savior the Lord Jesus Christ who, cha who shall change our vile bodies our vile body who shall change our vile bodies Jesus Christ He's the one that should change our vile bodies. Who shall change our vile bodies that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. He will subdue all things unto himself. He knows how to do that. And if you can do anything, learn how to get in line. Learn how to pull on him. Learn how to press into him. Learn how to lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him. Learn how to forget the past and press into him. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for what you've done and yet to do. We thank you, Father, for bringing us here for such a time as this and sharing your word with us. Thank you, Lord God. And we pray now that you'll open our eyes and cause us to see. Give us hearing ears and seeing eyes. Give us seeing eyes and hearing ears. Father, that we will attain to the things of God, that we will cast off the works of the flesh, cast off the works of the darkness, cast off the works of our past. We will no longer hoard our past. We will no longer hoard our hurt. We will no longer hoard our failures. But Father, we will cry loud and say, Father, forgive me, I have sinned against you. I've done wrong and I don't want to be in this place. I've sinned against you, Lord. I've touched the unclean thing, and I really need your help. I've violated you. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. Forgive me, Lord God. Reestablish me. Oh, Father, 
Reclaim me. Bring me back to your heart, God. Restore me to your presence, God. Restore me. Restore me. I've wandered from you. I've wandered from the grace of God. I've wandered. My prayers have wandered. Oh, my faithfulness have wandered. My diligence have wandered. Oh, God, my love have wandered from you. Bring me back, oh, God. Bring me back. Bring me to your heart. Don't let me depart, God. I'm sorry for the thing that I've done. I'm sorry for the thing that I've said. Father, move these things from me. Move this guilt off of me. Move this guilt of shame, this guilt of sin off of my life. Father, thank you for hearing my prayers. And I know that you hear me because you hear me every time I call. Thank you for this moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. If you don't know the Lord, this is the time to get to know him. And again, if you've been listening to the prayer, this is the time to just simply ask the Lord, Lord, come into my life and save me. I want to be saved. I believe your word. I believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. I believe in him. I believe that he is real. I believe that he is he is the bona fide son of God. I believe this. I believe that he came for this purpose that I might believe him and walk in truth. And your word says that many have received him. To them you gave power to become the sons of God. To them that believe on his name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for making me your son. Thank you for accepting my life. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for helping me. In Jesus' name. If you've done that, welcome to the family of Christ. Welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've done that, welcome to the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. And God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. And now, all I want to say to you, my sisters and my brothers, whoever you may be, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. We're just going to be an example to you and uh, and not do you any harm, but we're here to do you good. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. Go in the strength of the Lord and know that we love you. Have a blessed day, everyone. Have a blessed day. Amen. Go and make disciples. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father, bless everyone that was here with us today. Goodbye. Bless them. Keep them. Smile upon them. Bless their homes. Bless their hands, O oh God, to labor diligently before you. We give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen.